In cryptography, a cipher block chaining message authentication code is a technique for constructing a message authentication code from a block cipher. The message is encrypted with some block cipher algorithm in CBC mode to create a chain of blocks such that each block depends on the proper encryption of the previous block. This interdependence ensures that a change to any of the plain text bits will cause the final encrypted block to change in a way that cannot be predicted or counteracted without knowing the key to the block cipher. To calculate the CBC MAC of message 1 encrypts in CBC mode with zero initialization vector. The following figure sketches the computation of the CBC MAC of a message comprising blocks using a secret key and a block cipher. Security with fixed and variable length messages. If the block cipher used is secure, then CBC MAC is secure for fixed length messages. However, by itself, it is not secure for variable length messages. Thus, any single key must only be used for messages of a fixed and known length. This is because an attacker who knows the correct message tag pairs for two messages and can generate a third message whose CBC MAC will also be. This is simply done by XORing the first block of with and then concatenating with this modified. That is, by making. When computing the MAC for the message, it follows that we compute the MAC for in the usual manner as, but when this value is chained forwards to the stage computing we will perform an exclusive OR operation with the value derived for the MAC of the first message. The presence of that tag in the new message means it will cancel, leaving no contribution to the MAC from the blocks of plain text in the first message, and thus the tag for is. This problem cannot be solved by adding a message size block to the end. There are three main ways of modifying CBC MAC so that it is secure for variable length messages, 1, input length key separation, 2, length prepending, 3, encrypt last block. In such a case, it may also be recommended to use a different mode of operation, for example, CMAC or HMAC to protect the integrity of variable length messages. Equals length prepending equals, one solution is to include the length of the message in the first block. In fact CBC MAC has been proven secure as long as no two messages that are prefixes of each other are ever used and prepending the length is a special case of this. This can be problematic if the message length may not be known when processing begins. Equals encrypt last block equals, encrypt last block CBC MAC is defined as. Compared to the other discussed methods of extending CBC MAC to variable length messages, encrypt last block has the advantage of not needing to know the length of the message until the end of the computation. Attack methods, as with many cryptographic schemes nor their use of ciphers and other protocols may lead to attacks being possible, reducing the effectiveness of the cryptographic protection. We present attacks which are possible due to using the CBC MAC incorrectly. Equals using the same key for encryption and authentication equals, one common mistake is to reuse the same key for CBC encryption and CBC MAC. Although a reuse of a key for different purposes is a bad practice in general, in this particular case the mistake leads to a spectacular attack, suppose Alice has sent to Bob the cipher text blocks. During the transmission process, Eve can tamper with any of the cipher text blocks and adjust any of the bits therein as she chooses, provided that the final block, remains the same. We assume, for the purposes of this example and without loss of generality, that the initialization vector used for the encryption process is a vector of zeros. When Bob receives the message, he will first decrypt the message by reversing the encryption process which Alice applied, using the cipher text blocks. During the transmission process, Eve can tamper with any of the cipher text blocks and adjust any of the bits therein as she chooses, provided that the final block remains the same. Her tampered version, later delivered to Bob in replacement of Alice's original, is Bob first decrypts the message received using the shared secret key to obtain corresponding plain text. Note that all plain text produced will be different from that which Alice originally sent, because Eve has modified all but the last cipher text block. In particular, the final plain text differs from the original, which Alice sent. Although is the same, so a different plain text is produced when chaining the previous cipher text block into the exclusive OR after decryption of 
it follows that Bob will now compute the authentication tag using CBC Mac over all the values of plain text which he decoded. The tag for the new message is given by. Notice that this expression is equal to. Which is exactly. And it follows that. Therefore, Eve was able to modify the ciphertext in transit such that an entirely different message was produced, but the tag for this message matched the tag of the original, and Bob was unaware that the contents had been modified in transit. By definition, a message authentication code is broken if we can find a different message which produces the same tag as the previous message, with. It follows that the message authentication protocol, in this usage scenario, has been broken, and Bob has been deceived into believing Alice sent him a message which she did not produce. If, instead, we use different keys for the encryption and authentication stages, say and, respectively, this attack is foiled. The decryption of the modified ciphertext blocks obtains some plaintext string. However, due to the max usage of a different key, we cannot undo the decryption process in the fourth step of the computation of the message authentication code so as to produce the same tag. Each modified will now be encrypted by in the CBC MAC process to some value. This example also shows that a CBC MAC cannot be used as a collision resistant one way function, given a key it is trivial to create a different message which hashes to the same tag. Equals allowing the initialization vector to vary in value equals. When encrypting data using a block cipher and cipher block chaining mode, it is common to introduce an initialization vector to the first stage of the encryption process. It is typically required that this vector be chosen randomly and that it is not repeated for any given secret key under which the block cipher operates. This provides semantic security, by means of ensuring the same plaintext is not encrypted to the same cipher text, allowing an attacker to infer a relationship exists. When computing a message authentication code, such as by CBC MAC, the use of an initialization vector is a possible attack vector. In the operation of a cipher block chaining cipher, the first block of plain text is mixed with the initialization vector using an exclusive OR. The result of this operation is the input to the block cipher for encryption. However, when performing encryption and decryption, we are required to send the initialization vector in plain text typically is the block immediately preceding the first block of ciphertext, such that the first block of plain text can be decrypted and recovered successfully. If computing a MAC, we will also need to transmit the initialization vector to the other party in plain text so that they can verify the tag on the message matches the value they have computed. If we allow the initialization vector to be selected arbitrarily, it follows that the first block of plain text can potentially be modified while producing the same message tag. Consider a message. In particular, when computing the message tag for CBC MAC, suppose we choose an initialization vector such that computation of the MAC begins with. This produces a pair. Now produce the message. For each bit modified in, flip the corresponding bit in the initialization vector to produce the initialization vector. It follows that to compute the MAC for this message, we begin the computation by. As bits in both the plain text and initialization vector have been flipped in the same places, the modification is cancelled in this first stage, meaning the input to the block cipher is identical to that for. If no further changes are made to the plain text, the same tag will be derived despite a different message being transmitted. If the freedom to select an initialization vector is removed and all implementations of CBC MAC fix themselves on a particular initialization vector, this attack cannot proceed. Standards that define the algorithm, FIPS Pub 113 Computer Data Authentication is a U.S. government standard that specify the CBC MAC algorithm using DES as the block cipher. The CBC MAC algorithm is equivalent to ISO IEC 9797 1 MAC algorithm 1. See also, CMAC a Euro A block cipher a Euro based MAC algorithm which is secure for messages of different lengths. OMAC and PMAC a Euro other methods to turn block ciphers into message authentication codes. One way compression function a Euro hash functions can be made from block ciphers. But note, 
there are significant differences in function and uses for security between MACs and hashes. References